Road America is a fan favorite on the IMSA calendar, offering long straights with great passing opportunities and just a beautiful backdrop for racing. Let's preview IMSA's trip to Road America. Now before we preview the IMSA Sports Car Weekend, there's a couple of notable news stories that I want to talk about. First of all, IMSA's annual State of the Sport has historically been released this weekend. The 2023 edition though has been delayed and will actually take place at the season ending Motul Petit Le Mans. However, we're not going to be without news this weekend as one of the very critical pieces that is released during the State of the Sport address is the calendar for next season. That will still be released at Road America. And don't you worry, I'll be making a video to cover next season's upcoming schedule when we have all the details on that. Also expected in the State of the Sport address, there's a couple other critical pieces that teams are waiting on. For one, many of the GTD teams are wondering if next season we're going to see a bronze driver mandate. You'll recall that this was something that was initially introduced at the State of the Sport address last year, but soon after the announcement was reversed, at least partially due to some negative feedback from teams. Personally though, the biggest thing that I'm looking forward to is, is definitely hearing about the schedule. And also knowing which classes are going to be present at which rounds next year. Which brings us to another thing that could be announced in the State of the Sport address. Which are class entry size limits. Could we see a limit imposed on a category like LMP2 that's expected to see incredible growth not only from European teams that are coming over, but also from LMP3 teams that are going to be making the step up to P2 machinery for next year, as well as the already healthy existing base of IMSA LMP2 teams. It'll be very interesting to see what the breakdown of the schedule looks like, and ultimately which classes are going to be present at which rounds. Another recent announcement that has made some waves is IMSA's introduction of a new singles make series. The Mustang Challenge series will be the newest IMSA sanctioned series, and will comprise only of the new Mustang Dark Horse R. Now the car was recently unveiled and it will feature a 10 to 12 race calendar and compete on five to six weekends across the year. The calendar is set to be released with the announcement of all the other IMSA schedules. And there's also a huge addition coming to the GTP grid this weekend in the form of the Proton Porsche 963. The newest GTP entry will be the second customer entry on the IMSA grid this season. The other one, of course, being the JDC Miller Motorsports Banana Boat. And this Proton entry is fresh off a debut in the WEC at Monza. They actually had a really good debut there. They were leading the race at one point. Unfortunately, they had a mechanical gremlin that crept in and they were forced to retire the car, but a strong debut for that car nonetheless. Jean-Maria Bruni and Harry Tinknell will pilot that number 59 entry. I'm very pleased to say that there are very few BOP changes across the board heading into this weekend. There are a couple of small weight changes in the GTP class with Acura losing two kilograms of weight, and BMW and Porsche losing one kilogram of weight. There was also a very slight increase in maximum stint power across the board across all four GTP cars. And yeah, that was it. There weren't expected to be any additional BOP adjustments for the GTD class, but IMSA has announced that a 10 kilogram weight addition to the Mercedes AMG that was issued prior to the Lime Rock Park round has been reversed, so they will be 10 pounds lighter than they were at Lime Rock Park, and the Acura will gain an additional three liters of fuel. Did you know that Off in the S's has a Patreon? If you want to support the show, help me get out to a few more races in person, and also get a good sneak peek at some of the behind the scenes workings of the channel, then consider checking it out. Best part is you can start off with a free trial. Just head to patreon.com slash off in the S's, or check the link in the show notes. Road America, AKA America's Park of Speed, is a four mile, six and a half kilometer long track that features 14 turns and 171 feet of elevation change. The layout that we know as Road America today was created in 1965 by Cliff Tuttle. Racing did take place in the Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin region in the late 1940s, but it wasn't until a young fan passed away at Watkins Glen that mandates came forward for the racing to be moved to dedicated facilities. The dedicated track officially opened in 1955 with their very first 
SCCA race. Since then, the configuration has remained virtually unchanged. This year, we're going to see a bit of a difference as this is going to be the first race that we're going to Road America since it was recently repaved. But have no fear, the configuration of the turns and everything, it's still the same. They just put down a new layer of asphalt. So I think we can probably expect some pretty quick lap times with this very grippy track. Road America is recognized as both a fan and driver favorite. This year, we will see 46 entries take to the track at Road America, spread across the five classes. Yes, 46, that is a healthy increase of nine compared to last year. We're gonna see 10 entries in GTP, which is not only the largest GTP class that we've seen this season, but it's four more than we had in the DPI category last year. It's going to be seven LMP2s, which is an increase of one, eight LMP3s, which is actually a decrease of one entry from last year, five GTD Pro entries is the same number as we saw here last year, and a whopping 16 GTD class entries, that's an increase of five from 2022. In 2022, 62 laps were turned by the victorious number 10 Wayne Taylor racing entry of Felipe Albuquerque and Ricky Taylor. On the top step in LMP2 was the number 18 Aero Motorsports entry that was piloted by Dwight Merriman and Ryan DeLille. That was actually the second year in a row that they had won the LMP2 honors. In LMP3, it was the number 74 Riley Motorsports entry of Felipe Fraga and Gar Robinson. In GTD Pro was the number 14 Vassar Sullivan Lexus of Ben Barnacote and Jack Hawksworth. And finally in GTD, it was the number 57 Windward Racing Mercedes of Philippe Ellis and Russell Ward. Road America is just a very fast and high speed track. We can expect lap times of about the 1 minute and 48 to 1 minute and 50s for the GTPs, down to about the 2 minute and 5 second mark for the GTDs. And there are also some exceptional passing opportunities throughout the track here. Most notably though, at the end of the long straightaways into turns 1, 5, and 12, but also keep an eye out for some passes going into turn 6 and turn 8. The weather forecast this weekend at Road America could be interesting, with Saturday set to be sunny and temperatures in the high 70s, but Sunday, there is currently a 70% chance of rain. Now that could certainly throw a bit of a wrench into things if we saw some rain roll into the race around the halfway mark. But make sure to tune in to Racecast Weather on Twitter. They're great about putting out weather updates throughout the week. Onto the championship standings now in GTP. It's the number 31 wheel and engineering Cadillac that leads with 1,872 points. They have a 10 point lead on the number 25 BMW. M Team RLL entry. In LMP2, it's an extremely close battle, but the number four CrowdStrike Racing entry leads with 973 points. They are just three points ahead of the number 11 TDS Racing entry and six points ahead of the number 52 PR1 Matheson Motorsports entry. Man, you know that battle is going to go down to the wire. In LMP3, it's been a very strong stretch for the number 74 Riley Motorsports Ligier. They lead with 730 points, which is a 124 point lead over the number 17 AWA Duquesne. In GTD Pro, it's number 14. Vassar Sullivan Lexus with 2,462 points. That is a 151 point advantage over the number three Corvette racing entry. And in GTD, it's the number one Paul Miller racing entry with 2,226 points. That is an 86 point lead over the number 27 Heart of Racing Aston Martin. As for my picks to win this weekend, in GTP, I honestly don't even know. I could see BMW being really strong here, but my gut's telling me that the number 10 Wayne Taylor Racing entry takes the win here for the second year in a row. In LMP2, it's an absolute dogfight, as we just talked about for the championship. That's one of the reasons why Ben Keating has decided to do a full season entry now. And I'm going to pick the number 52 PR1 Matheson Motorsports entry to take the win. In LMP3, Junior 3 Racing has expanded to a second LMP3 entry for this weekend. And I think it's them that's going to be on top of the podium with their number 30 car. In GTD Pro, I'm calling Corvette to pull out a huge win and make that championship in GTD Pro a lot more interesting than it is going into it. 
And finally in GTD, while they haven't had the season that they've wanted thus far, Team Korthoff Motorsports I'm picking to be on the top step of the podium. I think that Mercedes is going to get along very well on the long straights of Road America. Now it's not just going to be the WeatherTech Championship that's going to be racing this weekend at America's Park of Speed. There's going to be plenty of support series action, starting off with the Mazda Itamitsu MX-5 Cup. They're going to have two races on Saturday, with the first one going off at 10.10 a.m. Eastern Time, and the second one going off at 3.40 p.m. Eastern Time. You can catch both of those races on IMSA TV. Sandwiched in between those two races is going to be WeatherTech Championship qualifying. That goes at 2.10 p.m. Eastern Time on IMSA TV. And to round out the day at 4.45 p.m. Eastern Time, it's the first race for the Lamborghini Super Trofeo Series. You can catch that on IMSA TV. Sunday has a day full of racing as well, this time starting off with the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. That race will get underway at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, and you can catch that on USA Network or IMSA TV. That'll be followed at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time by the second race for the Lamborghini Super Trofeo. And rounding out the weekend at 3.50 p.m. Eastern Time on IMSA TV and Peacock is the Road America 120 for the Michelin Pilot Challenge. Once again this weekend, you can also watch the WeatherTech Championship race again along with me right here on YouTube. I'll be live shortly before race start. All you need to do is pull the broadcast up, whether it be the USA Network or the IMSA TV broadcast on one stream, pull the YouTube stream up on the other one, and you can chat with some like-minded IMSA fans while we all watch the race together. I really enjoy getting to chat with you guys as we watch the race, and hopefully I'll see a bunch of you drop into the stream this Sunday. As I mentioned though, before the weekend even really gets properly underway with racing, we're expecting some big news to drop in the form of the schedule for next season. Which got me thinking, what would my dream IMSA calendar be? You can check out my dream IMSA calendar right here. Huge shout out to all the Patreon supporters if you too want to support the show and get a behind the scenes peek at what goes into Off in the S's then you can check out patreon.com slash Off in the S's. Once again though, thanks for tuning in. I hope everyone has a great race weekend and doesn't go Off in the S's.